Most people don't know what they want to do in life because they're not really interested in any one field. But I fall into the category of people who didn't know what to do in life because I was interested in everything. I love the arts, sciences, religious studies, you name it. But I settled on being an English major because critical thinking and writing piqued my interest the most. After college, I dabbled in a few different career paths until I found my first full time job as a copywriter at an advertising agency. There, I gained the marketing knowledge I needed to grow my own platforms. I learned what it meant to become a thought leader in my niche, how to craft stories that matter, and what it took to make a little corner for myself on the internet. After about two years at the agency, I quit my job to pursue Instagram full time. If you were wondering how I made a living, that was it. All creators on social media make their living in any of these five ways sponsorships from companies, selling their own merchandise, earning commission from selling affiliate products, donations, or ads from networks like Google AdSense. To this day, my income still adheres to those five channels. About 50% of my monthly income is from YouTube sponsorships, 15% is from my guided meditation videos, 15% is from my Instagram sponsorships, another 10% is from Google AdSense, 8% from affiliate commission, and 2% from my Instagram presets. That's just an average estimate. Sometimes I make a lot more in one area than the other. But altogether, my entire salary comes from those five streams of income, and it has been surprisingly very stable ever since the beginning. The thought of not knowing exactly how much I'll make from month to month can be daunting, but God has been extremely faithful in providing for me, so I no longer worry about surviving. I just have to work hard consistently, remember why I'm doing this, and trust that no matter what happens, I'll be in good hands. I'm so grateful to be alive in this era because there isn't a traditional career path that really suited me. If you're like me and want to make a living working from home, I'll give you both the practical tools and the foreknowledge you need to make a positive impact on the internet. I've said before that social media is a powerful tool comparable to money. The more influence and money you gain, the harder it is to stay true to your values. Remain humble and keep your eyes on what really matters. That's why my number one advice for those who are interested in becoming an influencer is to first determine your message. Don't just desire influence, money, and prestige for the sake of your own well being. If the focus is on yourself, you won't feel fulfilled no matter how successful you become. We were wired to be of service to others, not just to ourselves. Before you start, really ask yourself, what value am I trying to provide? And if you can't answer that, hold off on trying to gain influence just yet. There's no need to rush into this industry. It comes with a lot of responsibilities and pressure and calls for great mental and emotional endurance. There are definitely formulas that work, such as controversy, shock, and sexuality. But you don't want to be like everyone else. You can't affect positive change if you're just going to copy popular culture. I was hesitant to go on YouTube because I knew that it was saturated with toxic drama, shock value, and shallowness. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt compelled to redeem this platform. Rather than contributing to the chaos, I wanted to create a devotional channel. That feels like a refreshing oasis for people who are hurting and overwhelmed. I speak calmer, softer, and more intentionally in these videos because I know that many of you tend to watch them after a long day of work or before you fall asleep. I try to keep my visuals as pleasant and untriggering as possible to create a peaceful and healing space for you. Of course, perfection isn't possible, so there will always be little things that trigger some people. But my intention is clear. I'm here not to inflict more damage on an already traumatized generation, 
but to bring healing through the Word of God. A person that I've always admired in the entertainment industry is Fred Rogers from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. In 1969, Rogers had to step before the Senate to defend public television from an enormous budget cut. The senator was originally impatient and short with Rogers, who spoke slowly and calmly, but that was how he got his point across. He said, This is what I give. I give an expression of care every day to each child to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, You've made this day a special day by just your being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. And I feel that if we in public television can only make it clear that feelings are mentionable and manageable, we will have done a great service for mental health. I think that it's much more dramatic that two men could be working out their feelings of anger, much more dramatic than showing something of gunfire. He then recited a song that he wrote, which has to do with the feeling of control. It was important to him that children know that they have control over their feelings. After reciting the song, the senator, who was visibly touched, said, I'm supposed to be a pretty tough guy, and this is the first time I've had goosebumps in the last two days. He said, looks like you just earned the 20 million. And thus, PBS was saved. I encourage you to determine your message before you start pursuing this road full force. What is the message that you want to convey with your online presence? Because social media, and YouTube especially, is the new public television. People, kids, are watching you, and you do have the power to affect change. What will you do with that measure of influence? If you have a message that inspires you, then work hard at communicating it in the most creative and powerful way that you can. Like Jackson said in The Star is Born, it's about having something to say and the power to say it in a way that only you can. I pray that as you gain more influence, you won't lose sight of your message.
If you want to learn the practical techniques on how to create an online presence for yourself, then I highly recommend you take a marketing class on Skillshare. I really enjoyed the personal branding class by Kate Ahrens. This class covered in just 14 videos what I painstakingly learned in the span of four years in the marketing industry. You'll get insight on how to define your purpose and stand out in the noisy online world. I'll also link to other helpful marketing classes in my description where you can learn how to create compelling brand imagery, how to make viral content, and even how to make your own podcast. It's extremely comprehensive. And you can take these classes for free with a two-month trial of Skillshare, linked in my description. Without the free trial, Skillshare is still highly affordable, with an annual subscription of less than $10 a month. You'll have access to thousands of classes covering creative and entrepreneurial skills. I hope these classes will help jumpstart a new exciting career for you.